Nobody goes into business to fail, but the actions you take will determine whether you're successful or not. In this video, I'm sharing where you should focus to become successful as a government contractor. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. If you're looking to grow your government contracting business, make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on your notification bell so you get notified when we drop new trainings right here on this channel. Today, we're talking about must do's, how to course correct, and what will get you to your goals. Now, if you want more support on what we're sharing here in this video today, at the end of this video, or I should say um, down in the description, I'll put a link where you can learn all about the Government Contractor Accelerator Program, where you can take what you're learning here today to that next level. There are no guarantees with government contracting, although a lot of people look for coaches, mentors, consultants to work with and wanting them to guarantee that they will win a government contract. I don't understand the guarantee thing. You are the guarantee. Your actions dictates your success. What you know and what you don't know will play a huge role in whether you're successful as a government contractor or in business generally. So if you're asking that question, what's the guarantee? You're asking the wrong question. The real question you should be asking yourself, will you bet on you? Will you bet on yourself? Only you know the answer to that. All right, let's get into the habits of a successful government contractor. One habit you want to implement is networking. You have to get out and meet people, whether it's virtually, boots to the ground, whatever's working, whatever we're able to do in today's time, you should be meeting people and the right people. So consider this. You attend a two to three day event, conference, trade show, whatever it is, you're able to connect with people. So you're able to connect with people consistently over a two, three day period. So you're able to kind of fast track building the relationship over a short period of time. But then after that, you're able to take those relationships, those people you've met and continue to cultivate that relationship outside of the event that's the first thing you should be doing, getting out, networking, meeting people, and then cultivating that relationship beyond that two to three day event. Now, what should you be looking for? Depending on what your approach is to government contracting and what you want in your business. But one of the things should be uh, teaming relationships, prime contractors, contracting officers, other subcontractors. So again, it just depends on your business and what you want to have in place. Now, if you do this right and you go and attend a two, three day event, you'll have enough people to reach out to, to start nurturing, building a relationship with until you go to the next event. And I suggest maybe hitting a big event like that once a quarter. So that's only four a year. I think you can do that. Now, don't forget your monthly meetings that's in your local area as well. Those are cool too. So attend some of those as well. Now, the second thing is business development. This should be taking place whenever you're out networking, meeting people. You know, when you're in business mode, you should be doing some business development. Now, some of us, we can't turn it on and off. So if the opportunity presents itself and we're just out hanging out and the opportunity is there, we're still going to develop new business. So just keep that in mind. But you want to make sure you're doing the activities to build new business. And with that, the goal here is to build these relationships that will lead to new contracting opportunities. All right, the third one is your financial activities. Yes, I know a lot of people hate to look at their finances, but trust me, one day you won't. And so you want to make sure you're doing your financial activities consistently, at the very least on a monthly basis. And here's the thing. Money likes attention, just like people like attention. If you pay people attention, they keep coming around, right? Same thing with money. You pay your money some attention, treat it right, it'll keep flowing to you as well. So 
Make sure you're focusing on your money activities on a consistent basis. And that includes always know your numbers. Like, you know, how much money do you have to float a project until it can float itself? How many projects can you float at one time based on the money you have? You know, what are your profit margins? Okay, how much does it cost to deliver on a particular project or provide a particular service? You should know these numbers all the time. And then you should also know your monthly expenses, right? Some things will be variable. They may fluctuate, but you're going to have some fixed expenses as well. And so generally, you should know about how much your monthly expenses are. Now, I want you to comment below. Let me know one thing that you're doing to grow your business. Let me know down in the comments. All I can say about having a successful government contracting business is this. It's on you. And the question remains, will you bet on you? All right, so the fourth one is generating leads. Like this is one of my favorites. You want to keep your pipeline full of new opportunities floating into your business all the time. You can't get so busy working a project that you're not doing your lead generation. You're not doing your business development, your networking. You have to keep doing these things even when you're working on a project because they're so important to the longevity of your business and making sure you have consistent cash flow flowing into your business. So where will you go to generate these leads? I want you to determine your top three ways that you're gonna start generating leads like today. What are your top three ways? Now, you could do some networking. You can reach out to your prior clients and customers. You can you know, attend some conferences, trade shows, uh, association meetings. You can go to pre-bid meetings, industry day events, matchmaker events, do briefings with the contracting team. You decide, what are you gonna do? And don't forget social media, but what are you gonna do to grow your business? Generate leads, have a steady flow of leads coming in. And then you also have to consider how will you manage those leads? My personal favorite is Pipe Drive, and I'll make sure I put the link down below for that, but I love Pipe Drive and the reminders and things like that. So when we talk about nurturing relationships, cultivating relationships, business development, making sure you stay top of mind and all of that, Pipe Drive is a great uh, software that will allow you to do that, but also uh, take the guesswork out of it and remind you so you don't have to remember, okay, Tuesday, I need to reach out to this person. It will remind you as long as you put it in there for it to remind you. So it's a great system. Check it out. Okay, number five is follow-up. Follow up, follow up, follow up. A lot of you guys are going out, you're meeting people, you come back with this big old stack of business cards and then you just put them in the drawer somewhere and you're not following up. Let me tell you, as and you probably heard this, I'm gonna say it, but it's kind of like a cliche. The fortune is in the follow up, for real, for real, it is. So you wanna make sure that you're following up with all of your leads. And so the goal here is don't let your leads go cold. So you determine how often you need to follow up. Now, inside my government contract accelerator program, yes, in phase five, I lay it out for you guys on how you can follow up, how often, what to do when you follow up, what to say, and all of that is inside of the program for you. But if you're not in the program, then you just need to come up with your system and how often you're going to follow up. And when you follow up, what will you do? Now, in your follow-up, also, I want you to have a goal of where you want the relationship to go. Because remember, all of the relationships that you're building, it may not be that you guys are going to team on a project or joint venture on a project or anything like that. Because you're going to need multiple types of relationships to grow your business and take it to the next level. Remember, we talked about resources. I talk a lot about resources here on the channel. And I think last week video, I talked about some resources. So you're going to need resources outside of just having a contract. And so you have to work on building those relationships as it relates to resources as well. So know what your goals are when you're following up with a particular company or individual. And always, always have the mindset that you want to build relationships that are mutually beneficial, mutually beneficial and outrageously profitable. And that will get you to the finish line. That will make you successful and hit those contracting goals that you have. So at the end of the day, what will you do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly? What are you going to do as far as follow-up, business development, networking? What are you going to do to generate leads and have those leads turn into contracting opportunities, but also build on your resources that you may need, whether it's money, equipment, people, or something else. 
How often and what will you do? You need to map that out. Number six is bidding. Like that's all day, every day. You should always be looking for opportunities to bid. And by gosh, hopefully you're always bidding on new opportunities. Now, here's the thing. One of the things I teach my students in my accelerator program is to find your sweet spot. So it doesn't mean that you are going to be bidding contracts every day because I don't believe in just bidding contracts to bid. We don't bid contracts that we have no shot at winning because that's a waste of time. So when I say bidding all day, every day, I just mean being in the mindset and when the opportunities are there that you're bidding on opportunities that you have a shot at winning. So find your sweet spot, know your goal, and whether that's project size, location, that type of thing, know what you're looking for as you're looking for opportunities to bid as you're generating those leads as well. Number seven is opportunities. This is an all day, every day type of thing. You should always be on the lookout for new opportunities. Now, us women, sometimes eh, we get a little laid back on this one. I know, but I watch a lot of men and the men, you know, they don't care what time of day it is. If the opportunity is there, oh, they're jumping on it. And I'm like, oh, I'm tired. You know, it's like eight o'clock at night. I just don't have the energy for it. But men, they're always ready for an opportunity. So women, that might be something we can take out the men's book. I don't know. Mm. You know, we just have to weigh our options and the energy that we have. I figure if I can bring it to you, you know, from first thing in the morning to about five or six, I'm good. You know, so you have to just decide, you know, how that works for you. And I believe just when I'm building relationships and things like that, I always want to bring my A game. And so I'm more energetic during the day than late at night. And I've had even students ask me in my government contract accelerator program, or even when I do free trainings, they're like, why don't you do them late at night? And my question is always back to you guys. Do you want the happy perky Felicia or do you want the laid back Felicia? And so they always say the happy perky, the energetic Felicia. So that's why most things I do, I do earlier in the day versus after five or six. That's just how I roll. And so you have to decide, you know, what's the best time for you to get out and do the things that you need to do to grow your business as well. But I want you to be open to the possibilities and just be aware of where the opportunities are coming from and where you know they can come from based on what you're looking for. Like what agency should you be focusing on? What company should you be focusing on? Um, what particular location area you should be looking at? And then just be ready. Always be ready and open to the possibility of what's next and that new opportunity. The eighth one is hire help as needed. Um, I don't have a lot to say on that, but know that you're not going to continue to take your business to the next level, to the next level, to the next level by yourself. Yes, did I take my business to over $7 million, uh, with two people in-house? But let me tell you, we had to ramp up really, really quickly after that. So instead of doing that, be a little bit more prepared. That's why I share a lot of what I do here. So I'm not saying that you have to hire people before you need them. But oh boy, if you can have them on tap, online, and ready to pull the trigger when the opportunity presents itself, then you'll be better positioned than I was years ago. So you don't want to be behind that eight ball. That's a different conversation for another day. But, but definitely, definitely make sure you are hiring help as you need it whether it's in-house, employees, independent contractors, uh, virtual assistants, whatever it is, hire the help you need when you need it. All right, so there you have it. The habits of a successful government contractor that you can start implementing in your business today. So here's something I wanna leave you with. Remember this, and I'll put a link down below. I actually have a t-shirt that says this. I should have wore it, but I didn't. But nevertheless, I'll send you, to put the link down below in the description. Consistency builds momentum and momentum builds cash flow. So whatever actions you're going to take, be consistent. Also monitoring what works, tweak as you need to. And if you do that, you'll start building the momentum. And then that momentum, if you know how to bid contracts and write proposals, will get you to the cash flow. All right. So if you have any gaps, if you have any deficiencies in that, what you're going to do to be consistent to generate those leads and develop new business and then you don't know how to bid, write proposals, price, or something like that, you're going to have some gaps. And it's going to prevent you from creating the cash flow that you want. So if that's the case, I do want to invite you guys into my Government Contractor Accelerator Program. We cover all of that. Generating leads, 
uh, how to position your company in the market, how to partner, how to find the leads, how to find your customer, how to build team and relationships, how to price, how to write your proposal, everything you need, how to read the solicitation, break it down, pull out the requirements, how to market your business, business development, everything you need to build a successful government contracting business is inside the Government Contractor Accelerator Program, and it's just waiting for you to join it. And I would love to have you inside of the program. And I always say, I'll see you on the inside. So the link is down below, all right? Now, if you've been hanging out with me here on this channel for a while and you haven't subscribed to the channel, come on now, why not? Don't you think it's time for us to partner on your government contracting journey? Go ahead, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so you get notified when we go live and like this video, all right? And remember, you're just one contract away. Bye for now.